So what if Google made a couple of bold moves with its next Pixel in ways that might even challenge the new ones? As yes, we get new details on the Pixel 7a that make us wonder just how much money Google wants for it. We get new rumors of the second Oppo foldable coming soon that might make others look really bad. And Apple just made one of their most interesting cross-platform moves we've seen, but no, it's not the one you want. I'm Jaime Rivera and fine, I get your point that Japan's goal was valid, but wow, isn't it sad that Germany is pretty much out of the World Cup? This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with Apple and a new feature they've confirmed earlier today. See, back in 2020, Cupertino announced a new digital car key feature that allows users to unlock and start a compatible vehicle by bringing an iPhone or Apple Watch near the driver's side door. Now, what's interesting is that this was actually the result of Apple's work with the Internet Engineering Task Force to establish an industry standard for sharing digital keys across platforms. And well, as part of this effort, the company announced earlier today that iPhone users can now share car keys in the wallet application with Pixel device users through applications such as Messages, Mail, and WhatsApp. You just have to go to the wallet application, choose the tap share button and the key you want to share and uh, then follow the steps. Apple also confirmed that Google will expand this functionality to select other smartphones running Android 12 or later soon. Uh, who would have thought that this would have happened? But yeah, it's sadly not iMessage though. Moving on, let's uh, make a quick update on what's been going on between Apple and Elon Musk during the last few days, because the soap opera was intense. First, Musk accused Apple of censorship, claiming that they stopped advertising on the social media platform. Then the new Twitter owner also said that the tech company threatened to pull the social media application from the App Store without providing any proof, and then followed up with retweets of claims and quotes about free speech in a classic Elon move. Now, however, the part where the claims that Cupertino is reducing the amount of ads on Twitter is actually sort of real. According to ad management firm Pathmatics, Apple spent $131,600 on Twitter ads between November 10 and November 16, almost half of what was spent on October 16 to October 22nd, which is the week before Elon's acquisition, though you could argue that was iPhone launch. But anyways, after the storm of tweets, Elon said he went to Apple's headquarters and met with Tim Cook where they had a good conversation that apparently resolved the misunderstanding about Twitter potentially being removed from the App Store. Musk also added that Tim was clear that Apple never considered doing so. And just to end this series of tweets with weird statements and bad memes, Musk shared a peaceful and short video of a reflecting pool at the center of Apple Park in Cupertino. The interesting part is that Musk does not talk about the 30% cut that Apple gets for any purchases, which he was very negative about and then just doesn't talk about anymore. Now let's talk about Oppo because uh, it seems like their foldable portfolio is about to expand, and I mean portfolio. Nearly a year ago, the company launched their first foldable, the Find Then, and there are some rumors claiming that its successor will be launching later this month, and it may be joined by a foldable flip phone, which is actually what I want to focus on. See, the rumors just got stronger after a short hands-on video showcasing the Oppo Find and Flip surfaced on Weibo. On this video, we can see the display, which is rumored to be a 6.8 inch screen with a punch hole cut out at the top of its 32 megapixel selfie cam. We can also appreciate a side mounted fingerprint scanner on the side and uh, the phone also has next to it the volume buttons. Where it gets interesting is on the outer display, which looks massive compared to any other flip phone in the market and rumors suggest that it's a 3.26 inch display with lots of customization options. On the back side, we see a pair of uh, cameras, which are most likely the 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 main sensor and the 8 megapixel Sony IMX 355 ultra wide lens. Now, based on previous reports, we should expect the new flip phone to be powered by the Dimensity 9000 plus chipset and a 4300 milliamp hour battery with 44 watt fast charging. And finally, Ice Universe also so joined the reports and stated that it will be sold outside of China, but we have no specifics on if the specs will remain. 
And finally, for the most interesting news today, let's talk about Google since we have the first renders of the next affordable smartphone from the company, the Pixel 7a. As we were expecting, the 7a will apparently almost be identical to the Pixel 7, following on the same path that the company took with the Pixel 6a. On the back, we can see the new phone adopts the same metal bar where the cameras are located, hopefully it's metal. Now, on the front, where the most noticeable changes are usually located, we can see thicker bezels all around the panel. The phone is expected to measure almost the exact same footprint as the Pixel 6a as well. Now, it is reported that this phone will be available in two color options instead of three, which are white and dark gray, but of course, Google will have some weird names for it, like obsidian, charcoal, and whatever. Sadly, we don't know about the specifications of the Pixel 7a, but some rumors have claimed that it will come with a 90 hertz Full HD Plus display panel made by Samsung. It is also reported that it will support wireless charging. Finally, capped at 5 watts though, and an on-display fingerprint scanner. And finally, the camera department is expected to bring a Sony IMX787 and an IMX712 sensor. Uh, but uh, yeah, in today's question, let us know, I mean, would you buy the Pixel 7a if it kept the same price? Because in my case, I'm already wondering how the Pixel 7 will differentiate if Google did such a launch with the 7a. I mean, it's a great evolution, don't get me wrong. If they want to bring keep the price down and give us a better phone, I'm down, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below, love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me continue to watch the World Cup. I'm enjoying it. It's a pretty good tournament so far. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.